Hey there, everyone. I'm Daria Chisholm. Welcome to Hustle and Heart TV. Do you ever feel the need to be assertive and aggressive and loud and really put yourself out there in business and in the workplace? Do you sometimes need a reminder to do that? Well, my next guest is here to help us do this daily to really move ourselves forward in both business and in life. Her name is Elizabeth Rodriguez Dennehy. She specializes in a firm called Rodriguez and Associates with helping women to advance in the workplace as well as in business. And she also runs several leadership development programs. Elizabeth was such a treat to get to know because she really encourages women to, to stand up and be fully present and authentic in delivering their message, whether they're working in corporate America or running their own business. So be sure to stay tuned for this next episode all about being very expressive and moving forward in business and in life. You're watching Hustle and Heart TV, a video podcast show that spotlights expert advice from top money earners, successful entrepreneurs, superstar network marketers, and leading authorities in business and marketing. I'm Daria Chisholm. I'm inviting you into my home and I'm bridging my own personal success as an entrepreneur, MLM -er, news anchor, and now video podcast show host to help you leverage more tools and resources, make more money, and generate more ways to take action, become a rock star, and love your journey. And Elizabeth, thanks so much for being on our show today. I'm so excited about having you here on Hustle and Heart TV. Oh, I'm thrilled to be here. Thanks for having me. You know, I have to tell you, uh, doing some research, I found um, a quote. You're quoted as saying, and I love this, that um, your passion is women in the corporate world finding what they need to reframe and shift. What does that mean to reframe and shift? Reframing and shifting is about doing two things. Staying true to yourself, and then understanding that there are a couple of things you need to just shift, move, just enhance or reduce me. And let me explain. So sometimes we are too shy, too quiet, too um, complacent, too nice. And in the corporate environment, we, we have to understand we have to be that. We have to be elegant. But we also have to understand we have to be assertive. So th that's a, an example of a shift, right? That I be and I continue to be agreeable and nice and, and personable, but at the same time, understand that we have to find ways, and there's so many ways, in which by our body language, our voice, our demeanor, the way we express ourselves, the way we interact with people, we are assertive. So uh, that's in the core of the work we do. Reframe. We help women reframe and reshape. That yeah. is awesome, um, especially in this day and age. Women now more than ever, and particularly as we look at what's happening for women in the corporate world, uh, climbing the, the ladder uh, in leadership positions, but also women who are starting their own businesses mm -hmm. and becoming solid entrepreneurs in the marketplace. Reframing and shifting are two words that make sense now more than ever. Absolutely. And, and you know, the, the reason why I use reframe and shift is because a lot of women, and, and in many training and strategic programs that women go to, they walk through the door thinking, I have to change or let go of who I am. And the work we do is about being authentic, right? So I cannot influence people if I'm faking it, if I'm not all fully myself, fully present in front of you. I can't, because you, you know, right? So what we help women do is take the energy, take your essence, take that which is your entity and enhance it. And that reframing and shifting is what it's all about. It's just, just a little, it's like the radio, it's a knob, it's a volume, up a little bit or down. And that's, that's why I think the work we do is so transformative because women start to understand it's not about changing anything, it's not about changing the who I am, it's about modifying just, just that little, just, just, a, just a little bit, that much. 
to get to get to where I want to go. It's like the, the stone that's tossed in the pond. It's tiny, but that ripple can just spread out. That's beautiful. I like that. Yes, absolutely. Where did this all come from? Let's, let's get <laughs> your backstory. Let's get into to who you are and, and how you've evolved into to what you've become and certainly become quite an inspiration to people here in the Pittsburgh area. Um, how far do you want to go? <laughs> I mean, if there's something in the childhood, that made the <laughs> well, I actually quite, but um, let's use just modern history, meaning the last maybe 20 years. You know, I spent all of my life in the business world. I come from a business uh, family. My family had businesses themselves, so I, I'm, I've always been in this world of entrepreneurship and owning your business and going through the, all the great things about wonderful days and not so good days, and so it's in my blood. I first went to law school because I wanted to advocate for people and understood very quickly after four years and having a very successful professional career as a lawyer that there were many things about being a lawyer that was not going to fit my, my passion. I wasn't sure what the passion was, but I knew that was not it. I went back to school and I took a degree in, in international affairs. And, and with the International Affairs degree from the Fletcher School of Law and Diplomacy at Tufts, I started my consulting practice here in Pittsburgh under Rodriguez and Associates. And I spent 10, 12 years doing a lot of business development for companies in the region, in New York, um, Boston. And one day, I remember um, right after 9-11, um, I was engaged uh, in a contract with Johnson & Johnson, Miami, and I realized I was getting tired. Traveling was really hard because of so many hours before and post um, travel, as you know, it just got really complicated. And, and something was telling me it was time to just quiet down, stop, and figure out what I was, I was supposed to do next, which I did. And then I took almost a year to figure out what was my next chapter, and here we are. And, and so I, I mentioned law and advocacy because now I know why I went to law school. This, the spirit of advocacy is I, I advocate for women. Mm -hmm. And, and the sense of knowing that every time I'm done with any, any training, conference, public speaking, there's one or two or three or maybe a lot of women whose life will be changed just enough or, or a lot. And, and that sense of I'm here for you is accomplished. Right? I'm here to help you. I'm, I'm here to support you, which ultimately is what I want to do as a lawyer. I'm here to support you to do the right thing for you. Um, and so it, now it's all really quite but well, instead integrated. Coming, yeah, and instead of coming to the defense of someone as a lawyer, exactly. um, you are now the advocate, if you will, and I'm just making this, this bold out description, but, but an advocate in a way that gives women the tools to take action. Um, your, your business, your team of associates um, have certainly penetrated the, the walls of many corporate standing uh, companies, and as a result of that, you've, you've, you're helping women break the glass ceiling but really helping them enjoy their lives in the process. That's, that's perfect. And I'm going to steal that quote, and it's going to my website. <laughs> I love it. Uh, absolutely. It's empowerment. Exactly. And, and the beauty, again, going back to the work, you know, what happens when I'm done with a two- or three-day program is a sense of not only can I feel capable, I have all the qualifications, but I can feel that sense of empowerment. I have power, absolutely. It's interesting because it appears that you bring a sense of like psychology to this. You bring a sense of advocacy, as you talked about, um, passion for women. But there's tools and training. There's actually meat and potatoes. So mm -hmm. uh, let's talk a little bit about some of the programs that you institute for women. Yes, and so we have different programs. We have uh, a series of programs for the executive women. And these are women who are ready for the C-suite. These are women for the next big, uh, substantial career um, promotion. And, and those programs are really designed to help reconfigure strategically, not only who they are, but how they think. So again, that shift of, well, this is what I've been doing to this is what I'm going to be thinking. This is who I am, 
and this is how I'm going to represent myself to the rest of the world. And, and those shifts need to be thought through, understood, and there is a schema and a solid plan of action as a consequence of that work. We also have work um, around emerging talent. Those are the women that, that are coming through the door, our younger generation, who come with many of the same preconceived notions that, that we have. Right? So it's the age issue here is really almost not relevant. The young women is also feeling I'm not heard, I'm not sure how is that I'm going to feel it. Uh, do I ask now, or do I reserve the, the, the you know my, my request for a better salary? When is the right time? And how, how much am I worth? The whole issue of value, of asking for what I'm worth. And so at the Emerging Talent, we help them understand if you start to think about what you do from your um, networking opportunities, the way you present yourself again, what are the relationships you need to build? How do you understand the, the whole concept of leadership and influence? Those become tools they use to build their skills to become the next thing, the executive women. When we come back, Elizabeth explores her programs and the tools and training that she's put together to help people in the workplace and in corporate America really um, influence behavioral changes, she has classes and programs around conflict management, working with different generations, women to women, and much more. So grab a pen and paper, you're gonna to wanna to stick around for this. Hello, my name is Sam Deep. The content of the Sam Deep Leadership Academy has helped major corporations develop emerging leaders from their staff of high potential employees for many years. So why would you be interested? because the Academy will convince your internal departments to stop competing and start collaborating. It will create dramatic improvement in the quality of the service given to your customers. And it will equip you to find new ways to grow your bottom line. Your managers will find more time to focus on strategic goals. They'll more fully engage their followers and hold them strictly accountable for results. Your employees will gain something too. The leaders that they deserve and a rebirthed and more positive company culture that will unleash their productivity. More information appears here at developingyourleaders.com. So don't wait. Take advantage now of this opportunity to create better leaders for a brighter future. So we left off talking about um, the Emerging Leaders program and then you move into a different uh, set of programs for women. And the, and the other set of programs, it's called, we call them sustainability programs. And those are programs that help women continue to enhance that which they learn and sort of, sort of solidify on those new attributes and skills. Um, we're talking always about change, uh, and it's behavior change. And as we know, behavior change requires repetition. And so we help with sustainability um, in, in, in regards to helping them remind themselves what I need to do, how I need to do it. It's like a refresh course. Um, and there's a whole, a whole bunch of services or in, uh, seminars that we offer around specific topics. So conflict management, how to work amongst the four generations. It's really, it's a, we've done a lot of that work lately. Women to women, it's a big topic. How do we treat each other and what are the consequences of not supporting each other and the importance of supporting each other? So that's, those are programs that we also offer. Particularly in the workplace where there's only one position available for one woman. And now you've got this uh, conundrum that goes on in this collection of women who are trying to buy for that particular spot and still maintain some grace and dignity. There we go. How do you do that? And what we help them understand is, you know, one, go and seek, compete, try. And if you don't get the job, two things will happen. You want to understand what are the things I need to do for my next round. But most importantly, if a friend, especially a girlfriend, a woman professional, won that position, support her 150%. Because that's what we need to do. When one of us win, we all win. And what's really important is to consistently remind ourselves, I wanted the job, I didn't get it, that's okay, I'm gonna support her. 
And in doing so, she, you grow, right? And, and the environment starts to really understand the importance of what we bring, which is really in the core. My work is, you know, I'm a business person, and I understand that we need to leverage talent so that we can really perform, perform and offer our shareholders the best results possible. We can't do that if we're 50% engaged. We can't do that if we're not fully, fully there. And we're not doing it if we're not supporting each other. How do you translate that into the uh, marketplace for women entrepreneurs who are not necessarily in a corporate setting, but they're out trying to slay the dragon, so to speak, mm -hmm. bring home the bacon and make things happen for their families and their businesses, and they're competing in a space where there are lots of women, and yet they know that in order to be successful, they need to keep climbing to the top mm -hmm. in whatever business they're in. Mm -hmm. How do you translate that? And it, it probably is the same, but speak to women on that level. Well, I, I, would, I was thinking about the fact that, you know, when you said entrepreneur, and, and I've never, it's funny, I've never thought of myself as one, but that's who I am. Mm -hmm. and, and I think the, the recipe that I would share is the following. Understand that which you do really well. Don't become a little bit of everything for everyone. There's a propensity when you're an entrepreneur, if you are really good, let's say, I'm good at training um, at a particular level, but you get a request for a quote on something you've never done before. Sometimes the stretch is good, but the truth is you want to be smart to know my niche, my, my, my strength is in this one particular area, and I'm going to sell my services, be known for what I do best. And that helps you fight Goliath. Because I, if you think about a small company from Pittsburgh having the opportunity to work for a, a global company like Microsoft, what are the odds? And the reason why it was very easy for them to understand what I could offer was that I was very specific of what I could offer them as far as my competencies. And when they wanted to ask me about other things, I said, no, that's not what I do. This is what I do. And I, I think any entrepreneur, but most importantly us who are sort of trying to find our way to not forget the day we woke up to say, this is what I want to do, right? This is what, this is going to be my passion. This is what I'm going to grow. This, this one particular uh, service, product, skill, this is, this is what my strength is. And then Goliath can come and I can take Goliath anytime. And, and so there's no competition because I'm not trying to attempt or to try to be everything for everyone. I am who I am. And I can give you just this. But oh, when I do, I can guarantee you, you're going to be satisfied. That is, I think, the recipe for entrepreneurs, men and women, but most importantly, I think, for women. Where does this come from for you? I mean, would, would give me something that's totally away from work and from women and from passion and from what you've been sharing. Um, does it come from reading? Does it come from uh, exercise? Where is it that you find solace and space and peace? Well, that's, there are two things that I do every day. I read. I'm a, I, I read. Books are my friends. And every morning I spend 30 minutes in meditation. I, I need the, a quiet time. I think it's essential to get your energy aligned and, and, and centered. I've always had a spirit of, of being sort of like a, a bit of a doer. My mother told me at age two, she was visiting a friend and I got bored, stood up, crossed the street, and went to see my grandmother because I was just bored. And so I think that's a story about my life, right? So it's all, I, I, I have this thing about doing and getting involved with life. Um, I recharge through meditation. I, I learn through reading and observation. I love people. So I'm, I'm always observing and looking. And, and I, I, when I see something that strikes me, that a smile, a gesture, it, it's almost like this imprint. I said something happened there that was so gratifying amongst us too. Um, I bring that to work. 
that was my next question, as I was going to say, you bring all of this to work, yes. to your workplace, yes. to your team. Yeah. Yes, right. we do. <laughs> yes. Exactly but we have to, here, here, you know, people associate work, unfortunately, and, and I'm, I know you don't, neither do I, but, and this is one thing I say to everyone, work has to be fun, otherwise you're not in your place. The moment you feel the day has gone by and it's just been hard or you feel drained, something is not really clicking for you because here's, here's the beauty of, of, of work as I see it. You are done, and I'm, it happens to me all the time, I'm done with eight hours of training. All you need to give me is a little bit of water and maybe just another cup of coffee and I'm ready to go. I, I'm not depleted. The energy in the room helps me carry through the day. I, when I'm done, I, I have all this amount of energy that I've just received from the room. I, I can do it again. So I don't feel tired. Of course, my body gets into that place in which it reminds me, I think you need to go to sleep, right? <laughs> Time off. And that's all. And that we all drive. It's a good thing. Right? And I do. But um, the energy comes from passion. The energy comes from just coming. And it's, it's been work. I was never clear. You know, I was not this clear when I was 30. I was not this clear when I was 40. Um, I, I, I'm, I've always said the best decade in my life were, were the 50s, and I'm enjoying the 60s immensely. Um, it's, just, it's just the way it is, right? And, uh, and yeah. you're not stopping. That no, like no, no, no. 60 is a number somewhere in between. In the between. <laughs> it's, it's irrelevant not, to me. Yeah. Numbers are irrelevant to me. I, I, and, and I think I help women also know that, that that's the truth. Um, it, it, th there's a number that, that we really have a lot of power over. Um, because it's about your attitude and your state of mind. Age really is irrelevant to this woman. She is gorgeous, and by now you certainly know that both inside and out. When we come back, we're going to take a closer look at some of the things that Elizabeth does to just wind down. <laughs> to, to get to some private spaces, her travels, and all of her international influence. So you want to grab a map for this one because it's going to be quite interesting. And by the way, if you're finding this show interesting, we want to hear from you. Write a review for us. We'd love for you to go out to iTunes or Stitcher Radio, download this episode, and write a review for us. And give us a five star if you wouldn't mind. We love five stars. We want to make sure that we're providing you with the best content available, as well as show guests and ideas. So reach out to us and let us know how we're doing, and we'll see you on the other side of the break. If you're not showing up online in videos promoting your business, product, or service, you are truly missing out. I'm Darius Trism, and I'm here to tell you video marketing is huge. YouTube is one of the largest search engines, and people turn up there by the seconds looking for how-to videos, advice, products, and services. And there are so many ways to make money with online videos. Video podcast, online video courses and products, a YouTube channel, video blogs, live events, webinars, telesummits, Google Hangouts, and more. Not to mention you increase brand awareness, build authority, and increase loyalty. I know, but right now you're probably thinking, there's no way I can show up online making videos and marketing them. Yes, you can, and I'm here to help. Sign up for my newsletter and get instant access to tools, resources, advice, and information. Plus, you'll get my free checklist and five things to do before you hit the record button. And you can get all of this information and more at my website at howtomakemoneywithvideos.com. Do you dread going to work every day, stuck in a dead-end job? Hi, I'm Darrell Warden of the Miles Group. I love my career, and you can too. We're looking for people who like to go to work, have a great time, take control of their schedules, and take charge of their lives. I worked in food service, and I never knew that I could be happy, help people, and make great money. We will train you, help you get your license. If you want to work amongst friends and make great money, call Team Warden at the Miles Group. So you travel a lot. You spend a lot of time you know, in, in other countries. And So tell us about some of the favorite places you've been and, and where you get enjoyment going to. Well, it's, it's going to sound like a broken record. 
Um, it's, it's become my preferred city, and it's Prague, Czech Republic. And um, it's been a, 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 it's almost like this huge surprise. I'm sure you've gone through something like this in which you, you don't know what to expect when you go to the, a place for the first time. And I traveled there almost eight years ago with my husband. He was teaching, he's a professor, he was teaching there. And I met these wonderful women, and long story short, as a consequence of getting to know this woman, she asked me to come to Prague, and the, the city is beautiful. Um, time hasn't gone by, and so it's, it's everything around Prague. It's just this environment of the old continent, and yet you have everything else, right? All types of food and very modern environments and lodging, and they're just wonderful people. And Czech women are feisty and funny and intense. And I think now you know why there we have this why you commonality. Like this so much, I I, I do. So it's easy. And so I, I have wonderful friends. We Skype every Sunday. And it's just become my favorite place to work and to go. And to play. Absolutely. Um, best concerts. And, um, I was in, last time I went to see this wonderful modern ballet, and very rarely do you, I've cried after ballet performance. And we all did, it was just, it was just perfect. Um, so yes, I, I go to Sao Paulo, very different, uh, closer to my spirit and heart from my cultural perspective. Um, fun, intense, People are there eager to learn. There is a very interesting um, commitment uh, with the Brazilians to excel. There's a lot of pressure in a country that's going through so many changes. And you can feel in the professionals, so I enjoy Sao Paulo that way. And for fun and just relaxing, I go back to my country, San Juan, Puerto Rico. We have a little place there, and we just go away to paradise. It is paradise. It is paradise. Best okay. speeches. You know, our pillars on this show are uh, leadership, leverage, and lifestyle. And we've talked about each of those. And as we continue to talk about lifestyle, think for a moment on something that you have spent a lot of money on and regret having done so. And conversely, something that you spent very little on and has so much value in your life. So that's an easy one. So. Sitting down and observing people, or just taking on or observing a beautiful flower, it sounds maybe cheesy, or it's, it's for me, it's one of the most energetic, rewarding moments, free, absolutely free, right? Because what happens when I'm in that place of contemplation is I, I'm feeling and I'm allowing the moment to just be fair, be quiet, and, and that for me gives me a lot of gratification. So from a lifestyle perspective, I spend a lot of time enjoying corners in my house or just outside looking at a tree. That, that re-energizes me immensely. What have I spent money that I've regretted? Makeup is one of them, by the way. It doesn't work for me. <laughs> I, I buy and I buy just I it. buy a lot of it. It's not working. Um, that doesn't work. I um, I think you know I used to assume that having things in general will give you some degree of of pleasure and happiness. It, get, it gives you in some ways a degree of comfort. But truly, happiness is, is more about, for me, relationships. The one thing that I adore doing Sundays, my son just got married. And so I have a chance to cook every Sunday for the family. That's priceless. And, and we do it every Sunday from 6 to 9. We eat, we talk, we connect, and then we do it all over again every other week. That's wonderful because the Sunday dinners, I mean, most families don't do that anymore. I remember growing up as a child and going to my grandmother's house. Exactly. Dinner, but, you know, we, we're lucky if we, you know, sit down together and eat at 10 o'clock and 
share a meal together. Uh, and people's lives have just become just that busy. But for as busy as you are, to carve out that really important time uh, is true meaning for you, as you said, of life. It is. It is. And, and you know, we need to understand, and I, I just finished uh, teaching a class on stress management. The irony of less is more in terms of, of stopping, pausing, not doing, and just to be, how much it re-energizes your brain and your body and quiets your metabolism, so much so that your productivity level really spikes. So we have companies now that just specialize in going to big organizations and helping them find ways to decompress, to stop, reflect. You know, now you see uh, meditation rooms, yoga classes, walking trails. I'm, I'm thrilled. I'm happy, finally. But it's, it's about that. And it doesn't have to be the big vacation. The one no. that most people can't afford, it can be, you know, taking off a Friday afternoon and, you know, spending time in a quiet space and really enjoying that. I mean, finding the downtime, and, and I am totally guilty of not finding it, <laughs> but I know how important it is. And it doesn't have to be this grand, you know, expedition to make a vacation happen. No. A staycation, no. you can close the door and turn <laughs> off the internet, it, right? it, it, yes. Well, absolutely. And I remember when I was starting, we were just married, we were, we were broke. And, and, I, and I had come from a family which I could go travel anytime. So for me, it was a big thing. And, uh, and I, I became aware that I could do a lot in my, my living room, my room. Um, the reading was very important to me. Um, and it was very gratifying, and it just felt right. And I learned how to find and look for things that are free in your community that you can enjoy. We have beautiful parks here, and I'm not sure people know the beauty of our parks and just the opportunity you have to just sit down and sit in the bench, and just sit in the bench, do nothing. Yeah, just sit there, yeah. right? Tell me about a challenge that you faced in life that you maybe felt was just going to do you in. It was. Not one of those days, but maybe one of those weeks, or something that was big for you, and you faced it, and you got over it, or maybe you didn't, and you're still trying to get through it. Well, I think the first one was my, when I had my baby, my first, my daughter, my first child, she was born with a skin condition. We were in Puerto Rico, and we were told there was nothing you can do. And it's going to get progressively worse. You have to accept the fact that she's going to be like that, and maybe something worse could happen. And so that's why we're here, by the way, because I said I'm not going to give up. Um, it took us almost seven years to figure out through going to many, many different you know, medical institutions that, that perhaps the cure was going to be to move from a humid climate to a place like Pittsburgh with the Four Seasons. There was a moment, well, there were moments for years in which life was, looked really, really tough. It was a big, big, steep climb. Um, and I remember talking a lot to my mother-in-law. And one night, it was, it was 3 o'clock in the morning. It was a very, very dark night for me. She was very, very ill. And, and she said, it'd be fine. Just, just hang on, you'll be fine, you'll be good. Something is going to come your way. And the day after, I, I thought about going to Boston as another one of those institutions to see if I could find help at Mass General. And I called, and they had just received a cancellation for an appointment a week from that day. And it's all history now. Wow, Elizabeth really opened up about this challenging time in her life, and she tells me it was quite difficult. She says that her daughter was diagnosed with this rare topic dermatitis, and it really caused a lot of uncontrollable itching and scratching um, that made her daughter very uncomfortable. And um, she said for her and her family, that was a really challenging time, but they got past it. Her daughter, by the way, is doing great, and now that's in the past and uh, a part of history for them. Coming up next, we're going to explore one of my favorite parts of the show, and that is when we just squeeze out a little bit more from our guests and we ask them to share with us a hustle and a heart tip. 
So you can't wait to hear these two because they're going to inspire you even more. We'll see you on the other side of the break. Hi, I'm Jan, Rapreneur extraordinaire. What does that mean? It means days filled with friendships, a job that's all about fun, and a life of freedom. But it wasn't always this way. Not long ago, I was a stressed out working mom with a boring job just trying to make ends meet when I saw this amazing picture on Facebook. It said if I had just $25 and 45 minutes, this crazy wrap thing could tighten, tone, and firm my skin. I thought, no way, those results are unbelievable. So I had to try it. I went to a wrap party, and in just 45 minutes, I was experiencing those unbelievable results for myself. I found out I could join the party with my own website, have my own parties, and make some fast cash by having fun with my friends. I shared it with my Facebook friends and they all wanted to try it. I just followed the company's simple three steps to success and before I knew it, I was earning free wraps and cash and having a blast doing it. Best of all, the checks kept getting bigger and bigger every month. I was able to pay off my credit cards and student loans with this crazy wrap thing. Now I've quit my job. I'm able to spend more time with my kids and my family is living debt free. I've got the life I've always dreamed of and you can have it too. To start redreaming your life, join the party today. It's simple. Try it. You'll like it. It works. So what's your hustle tip and your heart tip? Let's think of the hustle tip first. I think the, um, the, the hustle tip would be just do it. Um, I, let me give you the example. When, when I started my company, I had a yellow book. I had a phone fax. No computer then, really. And I just opened up the pages and I just called. You know, and probably a big old clunky phone. I right? did. Not a that's small it. That's what. That's how it started. And 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 I said it to everyone. I said he was in the kitchen. We had a an area in the kitchen. There was a a, a desk and a chair. And Rodriguez and Associates started there. I just picked up the phone. The worst thing that can happen, if you want a of a recipe of hustling, what's the worst thing that can happen? They say no. And here's the thought: not for now, right? So, so it's not for now, and I always said to myself, and actually it was funny, I never got a no. I, every, every first introduction, I requested just to get to know people, right? So I'm new in town, I'd like to get to know you. And people said, sure, which is a funny thing. Right? People, we have a tendency, people are gonna hang up the phone on me. And I think it has a lot to do with your, again, predisposition and you, how you position yourself, but no fear. The worst thing that can happen is no, and I always said to myself, for now. And then I said it again. Heart. Two things. You don't give away your time. That's all you have. It's never coming back. So be wise as how you use your time. And may you use your time from your heart, from your passion and find it and don't say to yourself it's good for others it's not good for me we all have the opportunity to find that for which we wake up every morning whatever it is it is uh, a model someone who is an engineer someone who's going to be a elementary teacher whatever that is for that's going to bring a, a high degree of sustenance from inside for anything else that happens in life where do you and Rodriguez Associates go from here? What is the next chapter? What is that? That's a good question because we're in the midst of that. So we're reconfiguring our website and we've made the decision we're going to grow. We've been, I've always wanted to keep the company in a very small scale so that I can just have in the number of, of accounts, clients that I feel I can personally manage. And what our associates and I have decided is to go for next year. The book has galvanized this uh, as a consequence of knowing what the book can do for um, women and men. 
because it, a lot of men are, are reading the book and saying, I wasn't aware of this. Um, I, I have been transformative in terms of the strategy that we're pursuing. So 2014 going forward, we want to double what we're doing right now and we are really interested in, in expanding our scope of work to reach more global companies like the ones we've done so far. So I'm gonna be proactively marketing more of the company. So watch Absolutely, out. watch yeah. out. Watch out, <laughs> you're gonna see more of her, that's for sure. Yeah. Well, I thank you for being a part of Hustle and Heart TV. It has just been such a pleasure to talk with you, and, and I know that, that our audience can appreciate all of the wonder and magic that you've brought to these last 40 minutes or so. So thank you so much. Thank you for having me. It's been wonderful. And if you want more information about Elizabeth, her business, her programs, you can get that right at our website, hustleandhearttv.com. Type in her name, Elizabeth Rodriguez Dennehy, go to the show notes page, and there's all your links and great information. We certainly hope that you're enjoying Hustle and Heart TV, and we've got more for you straight ahead. Every day, Fast Signs helps businesses with their visual communications. We ask the right questions, which makes your facility safe and more efficient. We recommend smart solutions, and people get where they're going. We bring new ideas and help you build your business. Fast Signs offers more than signs and graphics. We're innovators, planners, and designers, and we're more than ready to help. For more information or to request a consultation, visit fastsigns.com. I am Stephanie Donegan, and I am the Client Magnet Specialist. I help entrepreneurs like you create irresistibly juicy marketing strategies that attract your ideal high-paying clients. I'll see you on the next episode of Hustle and Heart TV.